In this video, we're going to be looking at CPU instruction sets. So at the core of all computers is what is known as the instruction set. This is effectively the set of all instructions written in machine code that can be recognized and executed by a given processing unit or CPU. So here on the screen is a high level abstraction of a storage design for a generic computer, and it's going to serve the purpose of our illustration. So important things to note, we've got main memory at the top and it's got 10 locations and they're addressed from 0000 in binary through to 1001. We also have what we're labeling the execution unit, which is going to carry out all calculations. Now the execution unit can only operate on data that's been loaded into one of six registers and we've labeled them R000 to R101. So our task is to find the product of two numbers. The first number is going to be stored in memory location 0000, the second number in 0001, and then the result of the calculation, the product of those two numbers, should be stored back in memory location 0010. So in a high level language, this would be a line of code something like product equals num1 times num2, where each of those words are variables or locations. Now, how this is actually executed all depends on the instructions available in our processor's instruction set. So it might include, for example, a specific instruction for multiplying two numbers, e.g. mult. And when executed, this instruction would load the two values into the registers, multiply them together and store the result back out. Now, in another CPU's instruction set, we might find that the MULT command doesn't exist. It's not available. In this case, we'd need to use a number of simpler commands that were available in the CPU's given instruction set. So in this situation, we might find that using the given commands available, we can produce the same result using four lines. Now, we've gone into a little bit more complexity there than, than needed, but in essence, what's important to remember is every machine has its own specific instruction set. Here's an example of a simplified instruction set for a given processor. On the left is the actual binary machine code that a particular CPU will recognize as part of its instruction set. And then we've been using these short letter codes. So these low level instructions can be represented by what we call mnemonics and they make these easier for humans to understand. These low level mnemonics form the basis for a low level programming language known as assembly code, which we're going to be looking at in later videos in this course. So here's a brief summary of everything we've discussed. Pause the video and take some notes. So that's everything you need to know for the exam. If you'd like to learn a little bit more though, carry on listening to the rest of this video. So broadly speaking, when you study this at a high level, we talk about instruction sets belonging to one of two large categories, either CISC, complex instruction set computers, or RISC, reduced instruction set computers. So although much less common today than it used to be, the CISC architecture is mainly found in desktop computers and laptops. Intel's x86 processors still use the CIS architecture, although more recent changes beyond the scope of this course mean they operate very much like a RISC fashion. And they utilize microcode, which allows them to leverage many of the benefits of the RISC architecture. RISC architectures have become incredibly popular in low power and portable devices such as smart TVs, thermostats, smart watches, phones, tablets, printers, home assistants, TV sticks, and many, many more. As such, ARM processors and other architectures that work off of RISC now make up well over 90% of all processors in use today.